This video is about energy and ecosystems. And the topics in this key concepts video are energy flow in food chains and food webs, energy pyramids, role of decomposers, and energy storage and release. These key concepts are some of the most important topics covered in the IB biology course. Light energy is the primary source of energy for almost all ecosystems on Earth. It plays a central role in driving the process of photosynthesis, which is the key mechanism by which light energy is converted into chemical energy to sustain life in ecosystems. During photosynthesis, photoautotrophs, such as plants, fix atmospheric carbon dioxide into biological molecules like glucose. While most ecosystems rely on this process, there are some unique cases where chemoautotrophs use chemical energy from oxidation reactions. Oxidation reactions are reactions where there is a loss of electrons from one or more atoms, and it releases a relatively large amount of energy. This energy is captured to build biological molecules. Iron oxidizing bacteria, for instance, are remarkable organisms that thrive on the large amount of chemical energy released in these oxidation reactions. The chemical energy contained within these biological molecules is then passed up the food chain through feeding. Arrows in food chains indicate the direction of flow of chemical energy. All food chains begin with a producer. Primary consumers are the organisms that feed directly on producers, while secondary consumers feed on primary consumers. This feeding hierarchy continues to tertiary and quaternary consumers and so on. However, in food webs, organisms can have several different types of feeding relationships which results in several different classifications as shown here. Notice a hawk is a tertiary consumer in one food chain labeled in blue and a quaternary consumer in the food chain labeled in red. These energy-rich biological molecules are essential for all organisms. Autotrophs and heterotrophs alike utilize them to build tissues and store energy. When these molecules are broken down during the energy-releasing oxidation reactions of cellular respiration, the energy is stored in the chemical bonds of ATP, which can be used by the cell for metabolism and other processes. However, not all of the energy released during respiration is captured as chemical energy. Some of it is lost as heat to the atmosphere, which is why you feel warm compared to your environment. This heat energy has left the food chain and is no longer available to any organism. In fact, most of the chemical energy we consume as food is converted and transferred into metabolic activity and is released as heat energy throughout that process. Only a portion of it is used to make tissues, and this energy, along with the nutrients, can be transferred to any organism that consumes it. After examining food webs and chains, let's explore how energy transfer is represented by energy pyramids. Scientists use energy pyramids to measure the energy in an ecosystem by assessing the biomass produced in a given area over a year. The size of the boxes in each level of the pyramid indicates the relative amount of biomass contained at each level. It's often measured in grams per square meter per year. Notice in this energy pyramid here, the largest biomass is the base represented by the producers. They have a high content because they capture and store a significant amount of solar energy. Moving up to the next trophic level in the pyramid, the second level is significantly smaller. These are the primary consumers that feed on the producers. The energy transfer is shown here with yellow arrows. Primary production is the amount of biomass produced by autotrophs through photosynthesis and other metabolic reactions. Primary production is limited by factors like light intensity, temperature, pH, humidity, soil nutrients, and water availability. Secondary production, which measures the biomass produced by heterotrophs in the food chain, is dependent on autotrophs, and it's always lower than the primary production. Energy losses occur along the food chain, shown here with orange arrows. This results in significant decreases in biomass for primary and subsequent consumers, as shown by the narrowing of the pyramid. The losses in biomass is tied to the breakdown of carbon compounds through respiration, as well as through indigestible parts of organisms or incomplete digestion. As energy and matter flow upward, 
only the fraction of mass and energy stored in tissues is available at each level. This limitation leads to fewer organisms capable of sustaining themselves as top predators. The diminishing biomass available for energy and nutrients reduces the number of top predators in an ecosystem, resulting in large territories and fierce territorial defense. Now that we've looked at food chains, let's consider how decomposers fit into food chains and food webs. These essential organisms are responsible for breaking down unused biological molecules in waste and dead organisms. They are typically not represented in food chains or pyramids of energy because they exist at every level of the food chain and food web. Decomposers digest down dead organisms, parts of dead organisms, and break down undigested biological molecules in waste. Decomposers can be categorized as detritivores or saprotrophs. Detritivores rely on internal digestion. Like an earthworm who consumes dead organic tissue, then digests it internally and excretes waste. Saprotrophs digest externally, like some fungi and bacteria. If you've ever noticed a mushroom growing on a fallen log, the log is dead organic matter and the mushroom growing there is secreting digestive enzymes onto the surface of the log. The enzymes externally digest down the cellulose and other organic molecules, and then the mushroom absorbs those broken down molecules into their tissues. Let's take a closer look at how biological molecules can both store and release chemical energy. Autotrophs build biological molecules in anabolic reactions and then may break some of them down in catabolic reactions for their metabolism. Heterotrophs consume biological molecules and break them down into their monomers or building blocks, such as nucleotides or amino acids. These monomers are then used to construct their own biological molecules. For instance, if you have a salad for lunch, you will consume lettuce protein. Your digestive system will break down the lettuce protein into amino acids and deliver them to your cells where those building blocks will be used to construct human protein. Those proteins can be used to construct more human cells as you continue to grow or replace damaged tissues. In this video, we looked at how chemical energy flows through food chains in one direction, always beginning with a producer who converts light, or chemical energy, into the chemical energy contained in biological molecules. We saw how this transfer of energy relates to the amount of biomass that can be produced in a food chain, and how this can be represented by a pyramid of energy. We also saw how decomposers release unused energy from dead organisms and wastes, and return nutrients to the soil. We also looked at how biological molecules can store and release energy through anabolic and catabolic reactions.